Okay, so one thing to mention about these fingers is um, we just want to check the rotations of these. So it might look like a skinning issue, but we want to make sure we've got the correct rotations. So for this, I've spread the fingers out quite unrealistically, but to the max, so I can see which areas are following which. So I can see here these verts need to have some influence removed off this finger. But one thing I noticed is if we select the um, finger controls, so rotating ring A is the knuckle, so it's rotating up and down. The same with the B, and the same with C. So it's rotating in. So if I select these, it's rotating in. Make sure we're in local. It's rotating down this Z axis. So you can see it's got connection in there. So we'd expect we spread the finger out, we'd expect the finger to, you know, bend down this way as normal. So bend, you know, 90 degrees to the bone. So we can see here we want to bend along this axis, but just trying to use that manipulator just makes the finger flip out. So I'm going to undo that and hold down E, left click. Instead of local, I'm going to go to gimbal. And another way to get this to this is if we double click on the rotate tool at the top we can switch from local to gimbal and you can see gimbal is the actual the true axes it's going to show you what the axes actually are and you can see by rotating the spread which is the y axis it's rotated but the z axis which is you know the rotation of the knuckles stay behind it hasn't rotated along and this is something um, you'll come across and it's called gimbal lock when these two axes or more start to align so you can see the X and the Z are sort of getting too close to each other and this means we're not going to be able to rotate this correctly now I'm not going to going to go into um, I'm not going to go into this too much because I'm going to cover this in another tutorial but basically um, the way that rotations work is the rotations are actually parented to each other so if you think um, here we've got X, Y and Z so I've just selected the joint in the attribute editor you see a thing called rotate order and the axes are parented to each other so it basically means um, if you rotate the top um, joint, the top um, rotate which is going to then rotate the two that are parented below it so for example I'll just try and get a joint up here so I'll create, I'll just create a curve, invert, snap it, and move it up. So, so everything that has rotation has a rotate order. So this is on this nerve circle here, and inside gimbal mode. So holding E, go to gimbal, and rotating these axes about. You can see I'm rotating the X, and it's not moving any of the axes. Rotate the Z, and all of a sudden you can see the X and the Y moving with the Z and then I move the Y and you can see it's moving the X so this, this is telling us that the Z axes because it moves both axes it is the top of the chain it's the parent it's the top of that hierarchy and in the rotate order the Z is the last letter uh, the next one Y you can see it's the middle letter and X so the rotate order is basically saying the hierarchy of the rotations. X is the lowest child, then it's parent to Y, and, the, and then it's parent to Z. So Z is going to rotate the whole thing, all the axes. Y is going to rotate the Z, and Z, because it's, it's the lowest in the chain, it's not going to rotate anything apart from itself. So the way to think about this is um, the thing that rotates the most will probably want to be the Z axis or the top in the chain and then the thing that we rotate the least will probably want to be um, this X because we're not going to do it's not going to get any of these axes to follow along with it so taking that lesson down here we can see Z is the parent so rotating Y is not going to rotate this Z axis it's going to stay behind so it would be better if we had Y as the main parent 
So what I'm going to do is switch it to and looking at these from the right to the left. So I'm looking at the last letter of Y, which is the main axis. So that's the main spread. I want the Z to follow along with the spread, and then Z and then X. Okay, so just by clicking that, you can see the axis is now changed. The Z is following the Y. So as I, you know, increase the finger spread, that Z axis is going to follow along, which also means now we're rotating down the correct axis. Now there's no spread on the lower joints, so these have actually still got the same as we had before, the X, Y, Z, the default rotate order. So if I was to increase the spread of this, you can see the axis still staying behind. So we could change the rotates of these as well, but in the actual rig we don't have any spread attribute for the lower knuckles because they're just hinge joints. We could add them in there if we wanted to, but for this rig I'm just having the spread just spreading from the top. So for that we just need to change just the top knuckles. So we need want Y, Z, X and I'm just going to go through and check all these joints. Y, Z, X for this, uh, the thumb YZX. So when I'm saying YZX, I'm going from the right to the left. So from left to right, it's the child, its parent, and then its parent. So the last um, letter is the top of the chain. And then make sure we do the same on the other side. YZX. YZX. The last but not least, YZX. Now we can just double check that it's working on this side as well. Spread the ring finger out, and yep, so it's rotating as we'd expect. Okay, so that's just a look at the rotate order of the joints. So that really depends on the joints because the joints rotations are controlled directly through the connection editor. They come straight from these attributes and straight onto the joints. Things that have um, orient constraints it doesn't matter too much because we have that maintain offset and it's just taking the controls orientations and applying it to the joint and it might give some really weird rotations but that's going to be in the graph editor. We're not setting any keys on these. So, for occasions where the joints are connected up through constraints, it doesn't matter too much about re uh, about setting the rotate order because it's going to be sort of you know forced to stick to the rotations of this control. And again, remember, select on these FK controls. These are going to, and again with the wrist these are going to be rotated a lot because that's what FK is, it's going to be the rotation of these joints. So here again we want to set up the rotate orders of these. So we're going to do that in a later lesson but you can see here rotating this Y axis you can see straight away, so this is the hinge joint this is the most rotation we're going to get in this arm you know, it's, it's sort of the most organic rotation that you'd expect of the elbow to bend. So you can see here, because Y is the parent of X, or Z, sorry, oh no, it's an X, um, you can see we can get to a case where if we rotate at 90 degrees, all of a sudden these two axes are exactly on top of each other. So if ro by rotating the Z or the X, you know, we're going to get the same twist. But if I want to rotate this arm upwards, you can see that actually there's no axes there anymore. So we're not allowed to do that. And if we were to set keyframes in here and try and, so if I move to the world manipulator, if I tried to move this up, so in the um, channel editor, if, if I move this up or down, you can see it's adding lots of values in here on all three. So that would basically mean Maya is trying to compensate for that missing axis. 
and that's going to result in some really flippy curves in the graph editor. There's going to be curves, you know, for all three axes, and they're going to be really weird. So, well, not weird, but just look really odd. So, with that in mind, we could change this to Y as the parent, and then Yep, so we'll put the Y, Z, X on this as well. So now moving that, you can see we're moving the Z axis as well. And now we could start to rotate this up and down. Now it's not, probably not going to work as well as we didn't really set the rotations for this up in the rig properly because we're only interested in that hinge joint. But just by having them in there means the animation is going to be a lot better if we do decide to rotate those joints up. And it'd be the same for the shoulder here. I'll switch that to a different one. YZX. See I'm now moving that up. And because we've chose YZX you can see here how well it will work because oops the Y is going to move forward could move the arm up and we can still twist the arm along the axes but you can see it's a bit of a trade-off because if I want the animation to move the arm down first and then move it up you can see it's not moving the Y because Y is the parent so you just want to find the best rotate order so this one it might be best if Z then Y so Z Y X that's moving that down. So this was the original one of the X, Y, and Z rotation. So it's just a trade-off, and it, it also depends on the actual animation you're doing. You know, you can change the rotate or orders at the start, and then animate ahead. So it depends on the shots, basically. You might have a shot where you are getting a weird sort of rotation in there that's not going to be used quite often. So you could change the rotate order before you start animating that scene and go ahead and then the next scene you know might you might have a different type of pause in there so you'd go ahead and change the rotate order so you just change this per scene if you want but things like for the translate it doesn't matter the translates are fine that's just a coordinate so you can just move that about there's no sort of translate order okay so that's just to look at why these joints might have been a bit screwy if you're trying to paint weights these and trying to see if you could you know get these to work so you just want to check any things like that so what I'm going to do now again just go through these and just start paint weighting these making sure that they're only following what they should be uh, so I'm going to pause this well stop this tutorial here and in the next tutorial I'm going to come back when this skin has been refined a bit more and just go over up some areas and how I did it so, so I'm just going to go ahead start refining the skin in and just have a brief overview of how it was done <laughs>